Good morning. It's time to for me to get into the Word of God, and I hope you join me. I am coming from Genesis, the 19th chapter, now serving Genesis 19. All right, this chapter is rather long, and it's got a lot of information in it, but it is very necessary because the king has spoken, and he wants all subjects to hear. All right. A little bit about what is going on. We're going to be talking about, um, I, want, I want to say that when the word says that there was um, um, three men in the book, in, in the 18th chapter, when uh, uh, Abraham said he lifted up his eyes and he looked and lo, three men stood by him. Sometimes they will be referred to as men. One of them will be referred to as the capital uh, name Lord, capital L-O-R-D. And then, um, and this time we're going to meet them as being called angels. So the two angels. So the last conversation we had in Genesis 18 was when um, uh, Abraham was speaking to Jesus and saying um, that if there would be 50 righteous and then all the way down to uh, 10 righteous, he would spare the city. He said, what you do it for those, that amount? And the answer was always yes, that if I had 10 righteous, 50 righteous, 35 righteous, 40 righteous, I spare the city. And somebody asked me last night, said, why do you refer to, why was she, what did Jesus come from? Aren't you in the Old Testament? I said, yes. And uh, the New Testament ties in with the Old. And Jesus said, before Abraham was, I, before Abraham was, I am. And he is seen talking to Abraham. He said, because when Abraham saw my day, he was glad. And that's why the Jews had reason to think that he had to die because he was talking about something that they was like, you, you got to be out of your mind. Well, anyway, I'm telling the truth. What Jesus said, whether or not you think I'm out of my mind, I'm not lying. So now we get into verse, now we get into chapter 19. If I make a mistake and say verse 19, I'm, I'm, I'm referring to chapter 19. Sometimes I hear myself saying, um, uh, verse 19, but um, that, those are just mistakes. All right. One of, the, one of the most important things I learned from this chapter is, even though it's not spoken here, is where are the children? What's going on with the children? Hey, Lacey, what's going on with, when we make decisions with laws and when we make decisions to do things that we want to uphold, what about the children? Because you know, we grew up singing this song, His Eyes are on the Sparrow, so I know he's watching me. What about, he said, are you much more than many sparrows? What about our kids when we make laws and we do things? Do we, do, do we think about them? Do they matter? They do to God. So let's see what happened in Genesis 19. But children, are, there's no mention here. It's just, you won't see the word children here, but you will going to find out what happened if you um, please get your Bibles because that's the worst thing that you can do is listen to somebody talk and cannot verify, especially when you got a copy. So, all right, uh, Genesis 19. <clears throat> Again, well, that's not, I, I want to always mention that we're going to talk about these two men who are now referred to as angels. And there came two angels to Sodom. So the story continues. That's why it's important to read the word because it doesn't stop and go talk about something else. It's a continuation of what God is saying in the book of Genesis. It's why it's called a book. And there came two angels to Sodom at even or evening time. They had just left Abraham's house or tent had a lunch with Abraham, and here it is in the evening. 
And there came two angels to Sodom at evening. And Lot said at the gate of Sodom, Abraham, Lot is Abraham's uh, nephew. And Lot seeing them rose up to meet them. And he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And somebody said that's an a, a, a Asian culture that when they see somebody, they always bow down. I don't know that to be true in America, but um, that's what um, in certain cult cultures they do that. But he, but Lot recognized who these people were, or he, who these men were, or angels were, and he said, "Behold, now, my lords, lowercase L, turn in. I pray you into your servant's house. Come to my house. Very hospitable. And tarry all night. It's getting late. Come on, stay all night. And wash your feet. And you can rise up early and go your way." Come on, go home with me. I'm sitting at the gate of the city of Sodom. Why don't y'all come on to my house and and uh, let me give you something to wash your feet and um, and you can rise up early and go on your ways. And they said, no, but we will abide in the street all night. Thank you, thank you a lot, but we, we good. And Lot pressed on them all, oh, y'all. Come on in, come on in, come on. Don't do bad. Don't come on in. Please, come on. Stay all night with me. And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto him. So, all right, Lot. All right. And entered into his house, and he made a feast. Oh, he cooked some. Mm, he has. It's a, a feast, just like Abraham. Had some butter, some milk, and some some beef and some cornbread, and they had just fed uh, Jesus and the two angels, these same two, and they sat down to eat. <laughs> and he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned into him and entered into the house, and he made a feast and did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. But before they lay down, before these guys can take a nap, but before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round both old men and young, all the people from every quarter. It's getting dark, and here come some brothers or some men that lived in Sodom, and they came around uh, Lot's house, old and young, and people came out to watch from every quarter. These guys said, somebody's new in town. Have y'all seen them? And they went up into that man Lot's house, and we going over there to get them. We, I want a good boy. Come on, go with me. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are those men which came into thee this night? It's nighttime now. Bring them out to us so that we can know them. We want to come in contact with these guys sexually. And Lot went out at the door unto them. Lot knew the attitude of these guys. And shut the door after him. So he went outside. He said, wait, 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 wait. Let me have a conversation with y'all. Now you say, could that be true? Absolutely. The word said it is. And how do I know in today's language we can do this? Because I got six sons. And when that spirit of a man has no boundaries... And when I used to take my son, I had a, 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 a cousin who practiced homosexuality and he had a birthday every year. And that back then I didn't know, I just loved my cousin. I, I just went to his house and, you know, as I think now, 
it was more men there than women. I didn't think of that then because I was just glad to see him. And I remember one of these guys, a white gentleman, he was serving uh, drinks. And my son was young. And he came over here and he ran over to me. The man said something to him sexually. And him being young, he came over there to me and told me what the man said. I said, who said that? And he pointed to the, to the guy that was a bartender or the drinks. And he looked at me and then he got real afraid. And I don't know, it's just that I didn't understand that, that my children were young and I, I was celebrating my nephew's, my cousin's birthday. And I know that there are no boundaries when it comes down to when a man lusts after uh, uh, another man, especially when you came after my son. So I can see this. When I read this, I know that it could be true because I see it a lot. So imagine we're talking about a lot. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, where are the men which came into this night? We want somebody new. Bring them out unto us that we may know them. And Lot went out of the door unto them and shut the door after him. He said, wait a minute. Wait, y'all hold on a minute. And said, I pray you, brothers, brethren, do not so wickedly. Behold, now I have two daughters, which I got two daughters that have known not, that has not known man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you and do you to them as it is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing. For therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. I, they my guest. Don't do this to these men. Don't, don't, don't bring that stuff over here. Not today, not tonight. Take my daughters. And they said, he told Lot, stand back. And they said it again, stand back. He said, this one fella came in to Sir John and he would, he would need be a judge. Now we'll deal worse with you than with them. In other words, Lot, if you don't get out of our way. There's a lot of men out there, old and young. So you, you, who are, who do you think you are, Lot, coming here to, to be a judge over us? You, 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 you're not even from here. You're a foreigner. And who made you a judge? I suggest you get out the way because we want the men on the inside of your house. And I told you, we want to know them. And that no means we want to have sex with them. And they said, stand back. And they said again, this one fella came into surgery. And you, who are you? You're a stranger here. You, 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 you're not, you weren't even born here. And we need, and you need to be a judge. You've been, and we know you've been telling folk that what we're doing is wrong. Now what we did worse with you than with them. And they pressed sore upon the man Lot. They pushed up against Lot hard. And yeah, that's crazy to me. And they pushed them so hard it came near to break the door. But now these in the beginning said, and two angels uh, 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 lot brought into the house. Now they are referred to, but the men put forth their hand. They, they said, well, you call me angel, call me a man. But the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house to them and shut the door also. You guys said, Lot, <laughs> thank you for your feast, but we got a job to do. And those guys, those two men smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness. 
Some angels smote him with blindness, both small, young, and old, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. These crazy guys still trying to get in. He said they were, they were still wearying themselves to trying to find the door. You would think that now you're blind, you ought to just, oh, what happened to me? That body, what, that, that, that sexual desire was so strong, even blind, I still want you. And the men said unto Lot, and the angels said unto Lot, has thou here any besides? You got any more people that's, that, that's related to you? Sons-in-law? Do you have any son-in-laws? And your sons and your daughters and whatever you have in this city, bring them out of this place. Get your lot, get your family. For we will destroy this place. It didn't take but two angels. But we will destroy this place because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord. God said, I ain't having it no more. And the Lord has sent us to destroy it. Two. Two. And Lot went out. And spake unto his sons-in-law. So he had some sons-in-law. Which married his daughters. He had some other daughters. He had two that. He talked of two that were not married. And he went out to his sons-in-law. Well, I don't know how many of them he had. Which married his daughters. And said. Up. Get you out of this place. For the Lord will destroy this city. Clear as, just, just that clear. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons and to his sons-in-law. His son-in-law said, man, like, come on now. <laughs> you, you all right tonight? You good? Uh, uh, I'm going to need you to lock the door lot and go on out of my house. So that happened at nighttime. And he pleading with him. And when the morning arose, the angels gave Lot enough time all night to get, get your folk. When the morning arose, then the angels hastened, got up real quick. Lot saying, arise. Because Lot must have fallen asleep. Take your wife and your two daughters, which are here. Lest you, be, lest you be consumed in the iniquity of this city. This city is so sinful. I need for you to get your two daughters and your wife. And I need you to get out of town. And while Lot lingered, oh, Lot was like, I mean, well, let me get my stuff because I ain't quite ready yet. I'm just not getting up. <sighs> the Bible says, and while, <sighs> all right, I'm, I'm going I'm to get on up. I'm, I'm real sleepy. And while he lingered, the man laid hold on his hand. I'm going to need you to get out of here, Lot. And upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord been merciful unto him. So Lot, wake up. Since you, you ain't quite got the man out your eyes, I'm going to take you by the hand get out of this city. And I'm going to guide you because I'm, I'm trying to get you out of a place because we're going to tear this place down. The Lord being merciful unto him and they brought him forth and set him outside of the city. Took him by the hand. And it came to pass, just as sure as I'm reading this word, when they had brought them forth abroad, that he said, 
Escape for your life. Look not behind you. Neither stay thou in all the plain. Move lot. Escape to the mountain. Lest you be killed too. Unless you be consumed. And Lot said unto them, Oh, no, not my Lord. Capital L. Behold now, thy servant has found grace in your sight. And thou hast magnified thy mercy. You brought me and my wife and my daughters, which thou hast showed unto me in saving my life. And I cannot escape to the mountain. Now, this is a lot talking to the Lord. Let some even take me. It's, I, I can't do that this early. Let some evil take me and I die. Behold, now this city is near to flee unto. And it is a little one. Oh, let me escape there. Is it not a little one? And my soul shall live. Now you're talking to the Lord. Lord, let me, let me, let me, let me just have this right here. I mean, I know what you said, but can I just, can I just stay right here? And he said unto him, see, I have accepted you concerning this thing also. I would not overthrow this city for the which you have spoken. All right, Lot, go on over there. I'll work with you. Go ahead. Go on over there and stay. Now keep your word now. He said, hurry up. Haste thee, escape there. For I cannot do anything till you are safe, until you come there. Therefore, the name of the city was called Zor. The sun was risen up upon the earth when Lot entered into Zor. So we left Lot, got up, them angels put Lot out early in the morning. And the sun had risen up in the earth when Lot entered Zor. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. Revelation talk about it. There are bowls. Nothing but a bowl. But that stuff got enough ammunition to make the sun disappear. He said, I let it rain fire, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. Sin makes God the cry of sin. And that's why I said, you've got to be careful. This is a whole entire city. The old folk home. The daycare center. When we turn our children away from God. And you got the whole family acting like that. God said, I have no need. That's why we got to be so careful that when we put laws in place. That you don't understand that you're setting up the mind and the thoughts and the pattern of a child. We got so many laws, but God said the cry of the city has gotten up here. It has been like wax. And I'm not playing. If you don't need me, you can go. This whole city, they folk came around Lot. And Lot was a guy who had been around the word of God through Abraham. And he knew enough about God to say, I can't get off into this even though I live here. I, I, and he was slow about leaving. But he had enough sense to know something ain't quite right up in this place. And God said, if you can't, I'm going to help you out a lot. Ain't just get him by the hand and lead him. Because I'm not, I got an appointment and I will fulfill it. And God overthrew those cities. And all the plain, everything around it. And all the inhabitants of the city, everybody. I've been to a place. I worked in a place. Where sin was the, the, the theme and they, they said, we ain't thinking about the word of God. And if you don't like what we're doing, 
that we got laws and and um we we're, we're gonna we're gonna defend the children. We're gonna let them know if you want to be like me, then uh you can be like me, and nobody can stop you. We're here to support you. No, you're not. No, you're not. And if you post anything in my page that is is it goes against the word of God, I will delete you and your post. It's time out. Let me tell you why it's time out. You know my cousin, I told you I went to the birthday party. He's dead. He died in a way. He called me and he said, the doctor said I got pneumonia. And then the next thing you know, his body just kept de deteriorating. Not just him. I am 60 years old. And if you don't tell these children the consequences of people who chose that lifestyle and hide it from them, you are as guilty as the person who did it themselves. You cannot tell children that being fat will kill you. And then you don't tell them the consequences of a man who disobeyed God through homosexuality. And I'm talking about homosexuality today because this is what the word is talking about. All kind of sin. The Bible says that if you're not married to a man and a woman, then your bed is defiled. It means that it's a sick bed. And you cannot continue. If you're going to put labels on, if you eat this, this how many calories it is. If you're going to tell them that it's all right, you better tell them the consequences of other people who died from it. Why you promote the, 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 the front part of it. There's a backside to it. When I get on the scale, the doctor don't play with me. How you going to tell me if you don't lose some of that weight, you're going to die? Why, how, how, how is that easy to say? Anything that don't line up with the word of God is death. And you're telling your children, we're telling our children that it's okay. You got to be who you want to be. You can be who you want to be, but at least know the consequences of your choices. And I'm not angry. I get angry because when I see children being told, when you're approaching my grandchildren, you're approaching my sons, and they get caught up in that lifestyle that has a dead end to it. And then you didn't tell them. And then you walk around with all this stuff around your neck. Knowing that that's an indication of something that's not right inside your body. I've seen it too many times. I know too many people dead. I'm in the pool with a guy. And this guy told me. He said you know how many people was in the pool when I started. It was, it was 11 of us. I'm the only one that's still living. Tell those children that. Because when that city goes down. The children going down with it. We got people that sit up in the in the in the, um, in the offices that's promoting that lifestyle. If you're gonna promote the lifestyle, at least tell them like you tell me, you're too fat. Even if you're gonna promote the lifestyle, tell them what's connected to that lifestyle. And ladies and gentlemen, if you don't, if they don't tell you, it's online because they have to report it. And I looked it online and I saw the thousands and the th before the corona came. I checked it out. I said, why they don't expose this? And I put it online so you can see it. And God is saying, I'm trying to save a city and you're promoting and telling the city that it's okay to do what I said don't do. All right, let's go back in the word because I, I ain't playing. I'm telling you. You ain't going to tell me that what I'm doing is wrong and then you don't tell somebody. Now, you don't warn me. I got my warning. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain. And all the inhabitants of the cities, and they which grew up on the ground. Everything that grew up on the ground, that whole city went under. And that's why I don't understand why I grew up with people dancing and shouting and running around and uneducated. I don't understand why you need music to, to make people. What, what's, what's the shout about here? This is a warning to us. But his wife looked back. Clearly told him, said, don't turn around, don't look back. And his wife looked back from behind him. She already was kind of reluctant to go. And she turned her head and she looked back. And some said that means she turned around. But his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pill of salt. And, no, and, and a lot was a wise man. You got to do what you got to do. I'm not looking back. 
And she turned and became a pillar of salt. That means she did. Not, I don't know why she became, I don't know why she didn't turn back into dust, but she turned into a pillar of salt. A pillar of salt, that means there she lays. And Abraham got up early in the morning to the place where he stood before the Lord. Normally, Abraham get up just like I do, and let's go before the Lord. And he looked toward Sodom and Gomorrah and toward all the land of the plain. And behold, and lo, the smoke of the country went up as the smoke of a furnace. Those two angels that showed up did their job, and now there's the evidence. We don't have time to play. And it came to pass when God destroyed the cities of the plain that God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of, out of the midst of the overthrow when he overthrew the cities in which Lot dwelt. Let me tell you what, let me tell you, it wasn't that Lot, Lot, it wasn't all about Lot. It wasn't Lot's faith. Lot did, the, he had enough righteousness in him, but the Lord remembered Abraham. Abraham got up to stand before the Lord and the Lord remembered Abraham and in his remembrance of Abraham, Lot was delivered and brought out of that city because he had already told him, circumcise everybody that's in your house, everybody connected to you. And Lot went over there to the place and he stood in a city that was totally corrupt. And they tried it. They say, you, who made you a judge coming over here trying to tell you a foreigner? But God remembered Abraham's nephew. What the word said in the 29th verse. And it came to pass when God destroyed the cities of the plain. And God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst. He said, get Lot out of here. This boy connected to the man I'm going to use. Of the overthrow when he overthrew the cities in which Lot dwelt. And Lot went up out of Zor. So now Lot begged to stay in this little spot. And dwelt in the mountain. And his two daughters with him. For he feared to dwell in Zor, and he dwelt in a cave, he and his two daughters. So Lot said, after he saw what was going on, he said, I better get up this mountain. He should have gone, he should have gone when they told him to go, but he finally went. You know how we are. We won't do the first time. We got to see enough evidence that I need to be there, and then we try to get there. He and his two daughters. All right, next part of this story. And the firstborn said unto the younger, Our father is old. And there is not a man in the earth that come into us after the man of, of all the earth. Conversation wrong right here. You, you, you just in a place where you don't see anybody because of what you just went through. But this girl said, Ain't no man here. Ain't nobody here but us. We got to think of a plan. The older girl said to the younger girl, come, let us make our father drink wine and we will lie with him. We will lie with him that we may preserve seed of our father. Wrong. Just like Abraham laid with, with that woman and the Bible said, and you shall have a wild man. Anything ain't lined up with the word of God is wild. That we may preserve seed of our father. And they made their father drink wine that night. And the firstborn or the oldest one went in and lay with her father. And, and he perceived not when she lay down nor when she arose. Now it must be some strong wine. That you don't understand what you're doing with your body, with your daughter. And it came to pass on the next day or the morrow that the firstborn said unto the younger, Behold, I lay yesternight or last night with my daddy. Let us make him drink wine this night also. And go thou in, it's your turn, and lie with him that we may preserve seed of our father. I don't know how these girls knew to do how, how did they know they were going to get pregnant? Nah, they... They did, though. And they made their father drink wine that night also. And the younger arose and lay with him. And he perceived not when he lay down, not, nor when, he, when she arose. 
Thus were both the daughters of Lot with child by their father. God tells the truth. He don't skirt around it. I can't talk about that. I mean, that's something in our family we just don't talk about. Thus were both daughters of Lot with child by their father. That's why I love the word. Because it tells the truth. And the firstborn bare son, girl went nine months, and called his name Moab. The same is the father of the Moabites unto this day. And the younger, she also bare a son, and called his name Be'amani. The same is the father of the children of the Ammon, Ammons unto this day. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Genesis 19. It's time to read this word. The story goes on. Genesis is a book. We have gone through 19 chapters. And the story continues. I can't holler. Wait to go see what's in chapter 20. Talk to y'all later.